Mythology has been stolen from us, and I might have some idea on how to take it back. <laughs> Myth making used to be a community process, and the resultant mythologies were communal property. Now, there were, of course, battles fought over people making exact copies of specific books without getting permission from the owners. However, the characters, narratives, and ideas within were not really considered to be anybody's specific intellectual property. And because these myths were owned by the community, Anybody could add to them, and anybody could use them to their own personal benefit. This led to hundreds of different versions of each myth and legend, with none being considered more legitimate than the rest. Now, this is not an argument against intellectual property rights. I think it's important that academics and artists be able to claim the benefit of their own work. However, I think the way in which we have done this and facilitated this is very dangerous. Since the commodification of mythology and myth-making, what was once a communal process open to anyone is now strictly controlled and gatekept by the likes of Marvel, Disney, Warner Brothers, Penguin, Modern mythology now belongs mostly to publishing houses and game or movie studios, rather than belonging to the people as a whole. What was once a communal process has now been heavily monopolized. The folk aspect of modern mythmaking has largely been suppressed, and our ability to make use of the characters and narratives of modern mythology in a way that benefits ourselves personally is massively policed. This is extremely dangerous. Mythology is a huge part of culture. It reflects the values and perspectives of a culture. And though most myths and legends were not specifically designed to impart moral values or social values, they still often communicate them nonetheless. Now, I think it's important to balance intellectual property rights with the value of communal myth-making. And right now, that balance is fucked. I do think the problem is solvable though. And I believe that Creative Commons licenses are a huge part of that solution. I publish all of my work, both educational and fictional, under an attribution share alike 4.0 international license. This is a form of Creative Commons license that means anybody who wants to reuse, remix, or recycle a part of my work or even the entirety of it within their own commercial product they are allowed to do so royalty free as long as they credit me as the original creator and publish the subsequent work under the same license this effectively means that anyone who is say running a for-profit educational project may use any of my educational content in creating a new product for themselves, which they are intending to sell, and to be legally allowed to do that entirely free of charge, as long as they credit me and allow other people to do the same thing with the work they produce. It also means that anyone who wants to use the characters, locations, or concepts in any of my works of fiction may do so in a book they are intending to publish and to sell as long as they credit me as the original creator and allow other people to do the same thing 
with their work. This obviously means that if one of my books were to become very successful and people started writing fan fiction, those people would be legally allowed to publish and sell their fan fiction completely free of charge, royalty free, as long as they credit me, credited me as the original author and allowed other people to do the same with their work. Now, as much as I hate H.B. Lovecraft, the Lovecraftian mythos is still a good example of how I see this kind of thing working. Lovecraft freely allowed other authors to dabble with his creations. So when the collected works inspired by Lovecraft's work were collected and published after his death, this range of perspectives and styles in the writing massively popularized them. It created a vast array of stories, all unified by specific characters, themes and concepts, but with no fixed canon and no fixed owner, which is far closer to how a healthy mythology operates. And though Lovecraft himself was a horrendous bigot, which is something that often shone through in his work, that aspect is often subverted by others working within the same mythos. And that's part of my point. As long as our modern mythology is mostly owned by specific individuals and specific companies, that kind of subversion of the myths that they own isn't really possible on any kind of significant scale. Now, people also tend not to just read one author of the Lovecraftian mythos, but as many of them as they can find. The success of one inevitably helps the others. When is the last time you heard about a person reading just one fan fiction about a show they liked and never reading another ever again? And when is the last time you heard about someone reading every fan fiction about that show that they possibly could? I believe that a widespread adoption of this kind of license wouldn't just strike a blow against the monopolistic tendencies of certain publishing houses and studios. It wouldn't just strike a blow for reclaiming mythology as communal property. It would also help us to build on one another's success. A rising tide carries all ships.